Yo, what is good, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Xblick right here with you guys with the fifth part to What If Deku Had a title, Titan Crystal Quirk or Titan Crystallization, whatever you really want to call it. But yeah, here's the fifth part. That's pretty good. I do hope you guys do really enjoy this part. If you do, be sure to like, subscribe, all of that jazz. Uh, all the music, everything down in the description, Saint, all the other music, everything down in the description. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. No really, not much need to drag it on. So let's just get straight into this epic what if. Remember, God is awesome, you guys are too. And let's just get straight into this epic what if. Let's go! And the first competition will be an obstacle race. Once everyone hears this announcement, they are hyped. Well, most of them are. As they prepare themselves for the race. As Deacon prepares himself, he looks around at the competition as he mentally points out people that could possibly pose a challenge. So he's looking at Todoroki, Kaminari, Mineta, Bakugo, I guess, uh, and Kirishima, as kind of they lock eyes and give each other one last nod before focusing. If you guys are hearing my Discord, sorry, um, but yeah. Anyway, he then looks in front as he sees Mina, her then looking back at him before giving him a wink and sticking out her tongue, kind of taunting him. Before midnight starts the countdown. Uh, yeah, before midnight starts the countdown. And three, two, one, go! Before anyone could react, the entire hall gets filled with ice. Deku seeing the floor in the obstacle, he launches himself over the stadium and slides back down on the crystal, on crystal taking the leap. Or taking the lead, sorry. Todoroki seeing this scowls at himself as he tries to catch up as they both hear an explosion behind them Don't you leave me behind you bastards They both look back to see Bakugo flying through the sky using his explosions But as he's flying Bakugo feels this wind pressure from below him Before getting blown off balance and plummeting to the ground hitting the ground hard as he looks up, he sees a bolt of yellow lightning blitzing in front of him. When Deku and Shoto hear Bakugo go down, they see a bolt of lightning gain on them quickly, making them start to slide on their respective quirks, Deku using his crystal, Shoto using his ice, as they slide quick, speeding up drastically. As Deku sliding, he sees the robots in front of him. Seeing the behemoth that is the Zero Pointer robot, again, he decides to mess with Kaminari and a few other students. As the robot swings its giant hand down towards Deku, trying to crush him, he launches a giant crystal glacier towards it, stopping it in its tracks. When he goes past the robot, he then disfigures the crystal around the robot's foot, causing it to lose balance and fall over, stopping everyone behind him in their tracks for a short while. Other robots try attacking him, but any that get relatively close get a spike stabbed through their abdomen or just get destroyed by a pillar or a crystal in general. Not long after, Deku then arrives at the fall, where Deku creates a large bridge across. But when he gets halfway, he disfigures the crystal, causing anyone to 
that tries to kind of go across the bridge immediately regret the decision as they have to jump off and try and make it onto a pillar and find their own way across the giant pit. When Steku makes it across the entire obstacle, he looks back to see Todoroki is not far behind him, with Bakugo and Kamonari closing in fast. Seeing this, Deku starts running to the next obstacle as he hears Present Mike yell out that it is a minefield. Knowing that people are catching up quick, Deku decides to just go hard and fast, stopping himself as a yellow rock-like or looking substance covers his body, looking like some sort of body armor, as he gets into a running stance. A few moments later, he start he blasts off and starts charging through the minefield. Detonating mines every few steps, but he just doesn't care. When he gets past, he doesn't even stop to look behind him. He just keeps running. As he quickly approaches the tunnel, he feels a presence behind him before looking to his left and locking eyes with a pair of yellow eyes coursing with lightning. Dinky Kamanari. Deku sees his chance of winning slip in front of him as the lightning hero blitzes past him, winning the obstacle race. With Deku coming in a close second, Todoroki coming in third, and Bakugo scraping in fourth, royally pissing him off. <clears throat> After this, everyone starts pouring in with Ibarra coming in fifth, Hononuki coming in sixth, Ida seventh, etc, etc. Once everyone has arrived back at the area, the passing 40 end up competing in the next competition, in which Midnight spins the wheel once again as the hand lands on the Calvary battle. When this is announced, Midnight then continues, with the first place getting 10 million points on their head, in which everyone starts death staring Kamanari. Freak, kind of freaking him out a little bit. Seconds later, everyone starts scurrying around looking for teammates. Kamanari kind of just standing there, not knowing what to do really. Like, he understands that no one would want to be on his team since he's got 10 million on his head. That is until he feels a hand on his shoulder. Kamanari looking back to see Deku with his hand on Kamanari's shoulder while Kirishima and Mina are standing there behind him, looking badass. After the teams have been set up and readied themselves, Mud Knight prepares to start the Calvary battle. The relevant teams are as follows. Deku, Kamanari, Mina and Kirishima with Mina up the top, Kirishima in front while Deku and Kamanari are on the back kind of the backsides. Todoroki's team is practically the same, but replacing Kamanari with Hatsume, therefore giving their team the kind of giving their team the engineering kind of side and the different machines that he, she has. And with Bakugo's team having Tokiyami and Uraraka instead of Mina and Kirishima. The rest of the team stay relevantly the same, or relatively the same, not relevantly, because they're kind of, yeah. The rest of the team stay relevantly, rel relatively, relatively the same because they're irrelevant and not a big part of the story. With Midnight then starting the Calvary battle, and everyone starts bolting towards the 10 million point headband that is on Mina's head. Unfortunately for them, they're also going after Deku's team. So, as the other teams near the group, they are pushed back by a shockwave before a giant pillar pushes Deku's team 10 meters in the air. I'm not sure what that is in feet. I'm pretty sure feet about so that's about 30 feet in the air. Maybe 40, 30, 40 feet in the air. 
looking down on the rest of the contestants. Due to some being closer than others, Deku decides to troll them a little bit as the closest teams got their feet trapped in the crystal, halting their movement. After this, Kamanari sends a jolt of lightning down through the crystal to give the teams a little bit of a shock, enabling some of the other teams that aren't stopped in their tracks and aren't frozen to steal their headbands. Not a lot does happen after this point. Some teams get eliminated, other teams get more points. That is until about 5 minutes before the end where Mina points out something below them. Todoroki's team and Bakugo are heading straight for them. Todoroki creating ice and Bakugo flying up. Just as Bakugo goes in to take their headband however, the team is surrounded in a dome of crystal protecting the 10 million point headband from being stolen. Bakugo tries to get through it, exploding the crystal, but it doesn't work. So seeing that he won't be able to take the 10 mil, Bakugo decides to go for the next best thing and launches towards Todoroki's team, aiming for his headbands, but being pushed back by Todoroki's ice. Not long after this, the match is called with Team Midoriya taking the dub, Team Todoroki coming in second, Team Bakugo coming in a close third, and Team Shindo scraping in fourth. Shinzo, shit. Gee whiz, I'm dyslexic. Team Shinzo scraping in fourth. After this big battle, the students are given about an hour to recharge and take the rest, take a rest, before the one v ones battles begin. During this time, Todoroki grabs someone as he drags them into one of the halls. What do you want, Todoroki? The person questions. Kamanari, your quirk is similar in many ways to All Might's. So, okay, okay. I'm gonna cut you off right there. My quirk is electrification, okay? If I cause electricity through my body and my muscles, it enhances them drastically. No, I am not related to All Might in any way, shape, or form. But he does help me train from time to time with handling my strength and so I don't explode from over kind of powering myself. Kaminari explains. Okay, if that's what you say, but no matter what, I will beat you with just my eyes, Shoto declares. Truth be told, Todoroki, as much as it may hurt your pride, I truthfully do not care. There are many people that I need to look out for more than you. Midoriya and Kirishima are two large names. With pretty much... Midoriya is pretty much you, but better unless you use your fireside. He uses crystal. You can break through your ice. You can't break through his crystal. And Kirishima, he's pretty much a wall. You can't get through him. And if you think you can last out there with those big names and those monsters, with just half your power, you're more delusion. You're the most delusional person here. Kamanari explains. Todoroki just scoffs at this comment as he walks away, not even acknowledging Kirishima who walks past him. What was that about? He questions. The guy was explaining how he would win this competition by just half-assing it and using only his eyesight, Kamanari explains. <sighs> well, if he doesn't pick it up, he's gonna be left behind, Kirishima explains. You're not wrong there, Kamanari confirms, as they walk to their specific rooms to prepare themselves for the fights. During this time, Deku is sitting down just in a room as he reflects on the sports festival and how to go th through the, these next matches and how he thinks they will go. While he's thinking this, the match roster is revealed and it's shown that it is him, Izuku Midoriya, versus a guy from the general studies called Hitoshi Shinzo. Which 
he thinks if he's from general studies and he's gotten this far, he's got to be someone to look out for. Deku then starts walking to the arena when he is stopped by Ojiro. Hey, Midoriya. The guy who you are up against, I think he has a mind control quirk. When he spoke to me, asking if I wanted to be on his team for the Calvary battle, I said yes and then my mind just went blank. I think it's got something to do with you talking to him. So, no matter what he says, do not reply. He explains, Deku giving him a firm nod before walking to the arena. Alright ladies and gentlemen, we are now at the point of the competition you have all been waiting for. The one versus one battles. Up first, we have the class representative of the first year students, Izuku Midoriya, with his titan crystal, kinda ice burst crystal quirk. Versus a mysterious member of the general studies class, Hitoshi Shinzo. Present Mike announces, hyping up the audience. Once they both get on stage, Midnight declares, And now, the first match of the one versus one battle shall now begin! Once she says this, Shinzo starts running his mouth. So, you're in the same class as that monkey-tailed freak, right? He said something about pride, and that's why he didn't want to go through to the next round and do the one versus ones. I personally think he is an idiot. I mean, just because of pride. Who cares about that? The only thing that matters is being in this competition. So, he's just a bit of an idiot, really, isn't he? When he looks over at Deku, he just sees a menace. <laughs> he just... He sees a menace, his face blackened out, and a menacing aura surrounding him. Before anyone could react, Shinzo is blasted by a wave of crystal, freezing him in place. Alright, I think that should be good, Deku declares, a cheerful smile, a cheerful kind of smile on his face, and a cheerful attitude. <laughs> him grinning, kind of. While well, putting it, if you guys are trying to think about it, like you know, like when the kind of those anime characters are like, all oh, right, as they like do the peace sign or whatever, it's kind of like that, but more epic because it's Deku. Anyway, back into the story. Uh, Shinzo, can you move? Midnight asks. Shinzo, not uttering a word, word, just completely in shock. Oh. Hey, and Izuku Midoriya, who's the winner? Midnight declares, the entire stadium, uh, stayed, I can't speak, the entire stadium erupting in cheers and applause. Once Izuku evaporates the crystal, he walks over to Midnight. Uh, hey, Miss Midnight, since Shinzo didn't really get a good opportunity to showcase his quirk, could he have a quick demonstration just to show off a little bit? I'm happy to be a test dummy or whatever. Like, I'm, I'm fine with it. He questions, Midnight tilting her head slightly, but then giving him a nod of, of approval. And Izuku Midoriya has just offered to be a test dummy to showcase Hitoshi Shindo's, Shinzo's quirk. Midnight explains to the audience, kind of shocking everyone, especially Shinzo, who was definitely not, uh, kind of, yeah, who really just wasn't expecting this. What? Why? He questions. Okay, uh, Shinzo, how does this work? Do I have to, like, talk to you? Do you have to talk to me first? How? Before he could finish his sentence. Deku stops mid-speech as he just stands there, a neutral face and everything kind of just relaxed. Okay, walk out of the ring, Shinzo commands, Deku doing so. He then does a few more commands, commanding Deku to use his quirk to 
do a handstand to do a funny face a bunch of different commands in which Deku does and after this he then releases Deku Wow, Hitoshi Shinzo everyone, Midnight announces, everyone erupting in applause, making Shinzo tear up slightly as he looks over to Deku who just gives him a thumbs up and a smile. And the next match will be Shoto Todoroki versus Hunter Zero, Present Mike explains, that match going the same as canon. After this, the Kamanari versus Ibarra fight goes quite very very differently actually it's not quite differently very differently with Kaminari pretty much pushing her out of the ring like Ida did before she could react properly the rest of the matches going on the same apart from Tetsu Tetsu versus Kirishima the Tetsu Tetsu versus Kirishima fight which goes as follows Tetsu Tetsu goes charging in punching Kirishima in the face hurting his hand and kind of holding his hand in pain before then getting backhanded by Kirishima across the face knocking out Tetsu Tetsu cold. Shocking everyone, especially the class B students. After this, the quarterfinals are up with Izuku vs Shoto being first. They then start kind of, they then start walking up on stage as President Mike introduces them. And first we have Izuku Midoriya, who helped his opponent in the last round. And facing him is Shoto Todoroki, who started his 1v1 matches with a bang, with using his ice glacier attack against Hunter Zero. After this, they both walk up on stage. Mintipa Midnight announces. Oh, after they both walk up on stage, Midnight announces, The first match of the quarterfinals shall now begin! And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of this part. I hope you guys do enjoy it. If you did, be sure to like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, once again, music all down in the description. All down there. Saint. I'm pretty sure I've got a Samuel Kim theme down there as well. So check that out. They're really good music, or else I wouldn't be using them. But, yeah, so go check that out, and that should be really cool. Uh, another thing, Crown Fiend, thank you for the thumbnail. I didn't really thank you in the intro, but, you know, it's fine. It's fine. I'm thanking you here. So, yeah, thank you, bro, for the um, thumbnail. It's really cool. Uh, another thing, what else? That's pretty much it, being honest. So, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy this part. Um... Just, if you have any ideas, any suggestions, comment them down below. Uh, if you have any kind of, pretty much anything to say. If you want to have a good conversation, chuck it down below. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Just remember, God is awesome. You guys are too. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.